Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the video where I'm gonna be chatting through all of my thoughts on the Sunlight Science Program since we've been using it for now going on three years. And I have made a number of videos about the science program. I've made a review on Science A and Science B. I've also done a do an experiment with us day. And so I'll link all those above. And not only that, but we are currently using Science C as well as Science K. So you could say that I love the Sunlight Science program. I'm going to be highlighting the things that really hit for me as a Christian, as well as a scientist. I have my PhD in microbiology, so science is my favorite. But regardless, let's just get into the video. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel, all that stuff. Now, before I get too far, I do want to mention the fact that Sunlight has gifted me some of these science programs, the ones we are using this year in exchange for my honest review, and I really appreciate that. And so I want to give a big thanks to Sunlight. But to hop into the video, you guys, Sunlight has always been kind of this unicorn curriculum for me. I think I've mentioned that in other videos. I would always get the catalog. I'd look at all the books. I really wanted sunlight and there was a couple things that drew me in the beginning but one of those things was the science program and you guys i'm very particular with what i was looking for for my science program and kind of my philosophy for teaching science especially in the younger years which i'll get into in just a bit but i really like the look of the sunlight science program and so in this video i'm going to do two things two things one how's it organized real big broad what's included what to expect from the sunlight science program and two we're going to be talking through some common concerns, which I, I love to talk about. I love to talk about science and Christianity and all of those things. I've made a number of videos on my channel about that. So we're gonna end with a little bit of that. And so I will try to remember to put timestamps on this video in case you're more interested in the second content than the first, but I really want to make this kind of a full video that makes sense. So let's hop into kind of big picture on the Sunlight Science Program. So. After using it for almost three years, I would boil it down to kind of three things. Read, discuss, and do, I guess. I'm not quite sure what that third one is, but experiments. So really the core of this program is we read amazing literature, which I'll show you in a second, discuss it, which is an important part, and then use what we've learned in a hands-on way through experiments. So that's kind of the big broad picture. So let's start with some of the literature. Beautiful books that come with the Sunlight Science program. And so I've pulled books from all the different programs I had. Like I said, I have science K, A, B, and C at this point. And so there's kind of two main categories when you're talking books for sunlight. There's the encyclopedia type books, but don't let the word encyclopedia kind of throw you off. I feel like what these types of books do is they kind of set the stage to jump off from, especially books like this. This is from Science C and it's a DK Did You Know Science. And so this is what would be referred to really more as a spine book where it has the real basic information and so you kind of start each unit, if you will, off with this book. Like for instance, we are just now starting up kind of human body stuff and DNA and things like that. And so we're starting in this book first before we dive into some of the more specific books. And then this is another book that I would put more in the encyclopedia type category, but these ones are small. They're in the Science K program and they talk about one topic in particular, but it still has that encyclopedia feel to it. So those ones are kind of one set of books. And then I would say there's really two other sets of books. There's the more living books, I guess, story-based books. They are still very much science books though. We're not talking like fiction books. You're still talking nonfiction science books. Like this one was also for Science C this year and we just loved it. It was bringing back the wolves, how a predator changed an ecosystem. And there were so many things that we were learning through here, a lot of about food chain and understanding kind of the dynamics of an ecosystem and how when something changes, it affects a lot of things kind of downstream and upstream of it in the chain. And frankly, it's just a beautiful book. So there's books like this, which kind of deep dive into a topic, which I love. And same with these types of books. So they're more like the Magic School Bus books and the Let's Read and Find Out Science books. And these are wonderful too, because they'll dive into a topic, but they'll do it in picture form and they'll just take a lot of time through it. So I think this was Science A, and this one was this year for us again too. So this was Science C on fossils. And so it takes 
topics and it kind of deep dives. And then the last set of books, which I love, there's always one per year, is a biography. You guys, this is so cool. My kids really like this. It just makes the idea of what does it feel like to be a scientist come to life. So like, for instance, this was in, I think this was in Science A as well. So this is about Louis Pasteur, the fight against microbes, which for me was my favorite because I have a PhD in microbiology, like I was saying. So we were reading some of these books. So they have one of these per science year and it's in the four day program. So we always get the five day program because I'm a science nerd. And that fifth day book is always really fun, but it's never these books. You never will miss out on these books if you only have the four day program. So those are the books, you guys, this, this is really what drew me initially, is the idea of learning science in these ways, where you can pull out beautiful books and then discuss them. And what I love this year, especially as we've been getting higher up, is the discussion questions are really fun. So within the Sunlight Science program, there's also activity sheets. And during the younger years, since I've only pretty much used the younger levels, we've done these together. So please don't have the expectation that you're going to hand your kindergartner or something like this and they're going to do it, right? We work through it together. Sometimes I read the questions ahead of time and they look for them. At this level where my son is almost 10 years old, I'm having him practice kind of going through some of these himself and writing it out and things like that. But we're also just discussing it. So not only are there activity sheets for discussion, but there's also notes in the instructor's guide, which I have shown a video of the instructor guide, which I'll probably just pop up a video of the instructor guide going a little bit more into how this is set up because I just love it. Week overview, day one through five. And then here it's set up in kind of information. So you have your main book that you're reading. So in this case, we're reading the DK, Did You Know Science? And it sets out the number of weeks and it sets out the activity sheet pages, which I have pulled out and put in my kids' student binders. But what I love about the instructor's guide is it also includes the answers. And so here's the activity sheets for this first week. And you can see like that first day we would do questions one through four, which is most of this first page. And then there's the discover and do science experiments, which these are the ones we're doing this year. First week will be do insects look the same in each life cycle. But then there's these do togethers. Okay, you guys. I often skip these, but this is really where you can kind of enrich the science, which I just really like. So it's grayed out because it's considered optional. It's not necessarily you have to do this. But like for instance, on this first day, we're talking about lists of living things. So what it's saying is maybe have your children do kind of a free write, three to five minutes. They just write as many animals or living things like plants and bugs and things that they can think of on a list and then the next day, after we have talked about, I think, taxonomy and how things are organized and different genus and species and things like that, they're going to then take their list and start to put things into categories so they can act like a scientist and organize things. So it just kind of puts a small activity on some of the reading, if that makes sense. So it's not a hard thing to add. And I always look through those. And oftentimes that's where I will also find a lot of documentaries. So if you don't wanna be looking up your own documentaries. Sunlight does that for you a lot of times is they have these extra resources. You just have to look at your guides because there's so much rich information. But the last thing I want to mention here is on the bottom, they do have not discussion questions like you would find if you use the Sunlight History Bible literature because really your discussion questions come more from your activity sheets. This is just where you would get extra information, extra notes. They usually have some really interesting facts about what's being said. Either it's not said quite correctly or it's too simple. And in the notes, it'll make note of that. It'll say like, this is actually a simplified, this is too simplified the way the book said it. This is a more correct way to teach it. And so when we get to that part in the book spread, I'll be like, hey, this is actually how it is. This is a little too simplified how they, they wrote it here. But I love that. I love that I'm able to kind of go a little bit deeper into that. So that kind of represents books. So that's the read it, discuss it, read it, discuss it. We do that all week long. And my family has gotten into the rhythm of doing our experiments on Saturday, which I really like because it gives us the whole week to read and discuss and read and discuss and have just really fun conversations. We'll often also pull up biographies or if 
a book. One of the books has some of those quick links where you can just scan it and you'll watch a video. We always watch those. And so we'll kind of bring in some of that when we're talking about some of these subjects, but we don't have to. So to move then into kind of what I feel like as a scientist, what I feel like is a culmination of all that reading and talking and reading and talking is doing experiments. Now, I have only used the sunlight science that has been redesigned and they've gone up through, I believe, E. So K, A, B, C, D, E, six programs have been redesigned. What I love about them is they have really pulled in the experiments in a very tangible way. Like what you are learning and reading about, you are going to do an experiment about it on the weekend in our case. The other thing about the redesign, which I want to mention, is it pulled in the next generation science standards. Okay, I love science standards. I think it's really important to have standards in science. That might just be me, but I really need to be able to rest on what is being talked about and the validity of the science. And so the fact that Sunlight cares about that and they designed the program around those standards means a lot to me. It might not move the bar as much for you, but for me that was a big deal and so I really appreciated that. But back to the experiments is you get a big experiment book. So I brought our kindergarten book. So this is a kindergarten experiment book. Actually, we're doing this one. This is the one we're doing tomorrow is how is chocolate made? And we're gonna be talking about chocolate. We're gonna talk about how you have to add sugar to chocolate and they're gonna taste like Baker's chocolate. And then we're gonna make like a mug chocolate cake or something like that. It looks really fun. So you get all the instructions though that you need. And what I do like about these science experiment instructor books is you can read it. The idea is that you read it and that's kind of your lesson. You can also read it ahead of time and paraphrase it, of course, but it also gives full color instructions on what you're going to do. I found them always exactly what I needed. And then there's also kind of some pre-instructions. In red, it'll always kind of give you something like, and it's safe, you have to do it ahead of time. Like one day, you have to prepare something ahead of time. It'll mention it here, and then it also has the supplies, and it'll mention when something comes from the kit which here's our kit for kindergarten. It's full of lots and lots of just random supplies from like straws to clay to beans to like toothpicks and marshmallows or whatever is needed for your experiment. And I, I really like that. So every week when I'm ordering groceries, I just check the next week's list and make sure that I have everything. Cause some of the things you will need like an egg. And of course that's not going to be in your kit, but if you don't buy eggs regularly, you might just kind of need to buy them this week. So I always double check. And for the most part, I don't think I've had to hardly pick up anything. It's either very common household stuff or it's in the kit. And that's been my experience. All right, so I mentioned that the experiments tie into what you're reading. Now, that's very true. What is awesome though, what I really like about this program that I feel like it stands out against other programs is it really focuses on teaching critical thinking in experiment form. So it's like this idea of like, well, you are the scientist or you are the engineer. Like they're really big on teaching like STEM and engineering and technology, kind of keeping that interwoven into the science. So it's like, put on your engineer's cap. We did one where it was like, the issue was like how our house is built on permafrost when the ground kind of is changing seasonally. And so then we had to represent that. They had to build a model. They had to test their model then they redesign their model based on their testing to improve it, and then they retest. Do you see what I mean? That is more scientific. That is a better approach to science than just demonstration. Mind you, demonstration is very appropriate most of the time, but sometimes it's really neat to give them kind of a problem and help them learn how to problem solve in a scientific way. You guys, as a scientist, I just really appreciate that focus within the Sunlight Science Program. Okay, so that's a big overview, kind of the read, discuss, do, setup of the programs. And it really works for me for a couple different reasons. So like I mentioned, I already have the philosophy when it comes to elementary science, especially, that my goal is delight and exposure. That's really what I'm going for in these years. And I do that for even my science-minded kiddos. So I have a couple kiddos who just love science. They just get very excited. They take extra science at our enrichment school. But I don't feel the need at this level 
to pick a really rigorous, difficult program. I believe my kids will be better off with a delight-driven program where we are reading really cool books. We're talking about cool aspects of nature and how the world works and how our bodies work. And just to be able to have those discussions is more just delightful for the kids than to pick a rigorous program for these years. And again, I can only speak to the four programs I have used, but the program really hits that basic core philosophy for me when it comes to how I approach science. All right, now I want to transition into kind of the second major topic I want to talk about for this video, but I think it is really important because I think you have to consider these things as you're trying to figure out what science program you want for your children as a homeschooler, especially as a homeschooler who is also Christian, and in my case, also a scientist. And so I feel like some of the most common concerns that I have seen or heard from other Sunlight Moms or read posts on like the Facebook Sunlight groups is just how does sunlight handle evolution and the age of the earth, right? So those are two big concepts that I think everybody should be thinking about and considering and definitely not pushing to the side, but also not like making the most important issue ever, right? I think we need a healthy balance between those things. And so I come at it with a certain viewpoint as you all come at it with certain viewpoints. What helped me and what really pushed me over the edge to give Sunlight Science a try was two things. It was really two articles. The first one, and probably the most important one, is this article that comes with every Sunlight Science program, and I bet it's on their website. If it is, I will link it down below. It comes in the introductory section of the science programs, and it is labeled Evolution and the Age of the Earth. And so this explains how sunlight approaches these topics. Because I feel like some people will feel like upset or offended in some way by something within the program because they haven't read this or don't understand the place that the sunlight program is coming from. And this really helped me before I brought the program. But the other thing that helped me was an article written by the founder of Sunlight, so John Holtzman. And he wrote an article and I have it here and I can also attach this down below. It's just a blog post. It's called Young or Old Earth Creationists, Can We Even Talk Together? The heart behind the article was we need to, as a homeschool community, do a better job of understanding each other and giving each other grace. And I love the article. There's a lot of things in there. And in my opinion, it doesn't even take a stance, if you will. It's not like I am Old Earth or I am Young Earth. He doesn't even do that. And nor does this little article say that sunlight curriculum is this or that. They have what I feel like is a healthier place to be is that it allows you as the parent to teach the information how you see fit to your children. And that really hit home for me because for me, when I was looking for a homeschool science program, I wanted one that kind of honored God as a creator without making science like scary, and evil, which some programs do. They really just discount the science. And I didn't want that. I was not interested in that. But I do want to give the quick caveat that I'm not an expert in this. I'm constantly researching it. I find it interesting and fascinating and I have lots of resources, but I'm not an expert by any means. This is just something I have to wrestle with. And I think everybody does a little bit. And I just wanted to share a little bit about more how that has worked for me in regards to the sunlight science. But I wanted a curriculum that also faced the tough topics. Like, so I didn't want one that just kind of ignored it. I don't think that's helpful. And I didn't want that for my kids. I wanted it to include materials like this, for instance. It includes materials that this is scientific. This is just fossils. This is how fossils work. This is how scientists have discovered fossils, things like that. Not so much a commentary on like what they think about fossils or anything like that, but it's just like, this is what fossils are. And I like that because then it gives a good jumping off point for me to talk about it. And then the instructor guides also have lots of notes when there's anything that could potentially be kind of one side or the other or something like that. And so I love that because I feel like that's what I would see sometimes in some people's posts. They're like, oh my gosh, I saw one of our encyclopedia books uses like billions of years. And when it does that, Sunlight actually has how to talk about it. If for instance, you are a homeschooler who is young earth, Sunlight has ways to speak through that. They give you kind of almost like a model for like, say this to your kids, but they also choose that resource because one, it's a beautiful resource. 
Two, it is what is commonly believed. And so you want to teach this to your kids so that they understand what is going on and they can understand what the controversy is. And maybe not in these younger years, but as they grow up, you can keep having these conversations because I really want there to be like adequate understanding for my kids. I want them to understand, to understand even like the science, understand maybe the issue. I want them to understand it and I want to expose them at home so we can have conversations and so they can engage with future peers and future professors. Now engage in a good way, not like apologetics, like I need to know how to fight them back. No, it's not, not that sense, but like engage with the issue because they understand it and they've wrestled with it. They thought about it. They wrote papers about it, all the things, you know, I want it to happen in my house. And I feel like the fact that sunlight includes those things in the books and then allows the parents freedom to kind of take it a couple different ways with notes and with guidance, I love. And I think I feel strongly about this because I used to teach at the college level. I taught at a Christian university and I would have some freshman students come in that were just fearful. They were fearful of science. Like they were really interested, like they really wanted to be a nurse or something. So obviously they were taking science courses, but they were taught if you understand evolution, you're gonna lose your faith or you have a higher risk of losing your faith the more you understand some of these science concepts. So they were scared. They were like, don't, I don't know if I wanna learn this. Like. I don't want to lose my faith and it was nice because then I could walk them through kind of like here's what we teach we teach the evolution but we teach it with kind of a biblical heart behind it the ability to look at the findings and think through maybe how those can be interpreted instead of being so scared of the findings based on scientific conclusions made by people who maybe do not believe in God or a creator and so they can only conclude things one way, but as a believer, you can conclude things a different way, but you have to look at the results. You have to look at the science. You have to see the science as respectable and not something scary and to be refuted. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But I would have freshmen like that. And, and I love the fact that I could walk with them in that. And then they could go on to be amazing nurses and things that they wanted to pursue, that they were able to get past that and still feel confident in being able to hold on to their faith. And so the last thing I did want to mention, so I'd highly recommend looking at this, but the last quote I wanted to mention on here, it comes from Sunlight. It says, our goal here is not to present a definitive position on the age of the earth or to present nuanced arguments for either side of the debate, but to leave it to you as the parent to discuss with your children as you see fit. Guys, I love that. So I hope I was able to kind of address some of those concerns. Mostly I just want to point you to those articles to help you understand a bit more about where sunlight kind of lands on those things. So it won't take you by surprise if say you are very interested in a literature based model for teaching science and all the things I was talking about as to why we really love the sunlight science program. I hope I was able to kind of ease some of those concerns as well as excite you about the program because I really, really love it. Even if we didn't use, the other programs, which we use almost everything from Sunlight now, but even if we didn't use those, I would still use the Sunlight Science because I have found it just ticks all the boxes for me and what I want to accomplish with my kids. And if you are interested in the Sunlight Science program, let me know down below. I would love to chat about it with you. If you have more questions or even more questions about kind of those common concerns, I would love to chat with you about that too. Sometimes it's hard to make sure I express exactly what I mean to. And if I didn't, let me know down below and we can chat about it. And so you guys, I hope you're doing well. And if you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next homeschool video. All right, guys, take care.